Welcome to Education and More's Learn Python 3 Programming at a Snail's Pace. My name is Marcus Gardner and I'm the instructor for this course. In today's video, we're going to talk about variables. This is a very short video, but it's also very important. It could mean the difference between keeping your job and not. So, but allow me to explain. First off, variables store data. Okay, now let's go back to programming here and let's create a new one. File new, file save as, and we'll call this lesson three. And then P down six, hit enter, save. Okay, now in lesson two, we, you know, printed, you know, some variable, uh, some information, some strings and some numbers. In lesson one, we printed some numbers. Okay. Well, that's going to get quite boring after a while. <laughs> You're going to eventually want to start taking in data from a user. Okay. Or reading data from a file. So we can't always say, you know, print, hello, Jack. <laughs> We don't know who the person is, okay? So you're going to have to have some variables to hold some data. Okay. So let's say I want to hold a person's name, okay? There are many ways to do that, but, um, well, let me go ahead and skip to the next part here. Um, there we go. I want to skip the second one right here for right now use descriptive names so i might say let's say i wanted to store my favorite teacher's name so favorite teacher's name um my favorite was enix dr enix okay now if that was the only teacher that I was going to store the name of, then I probably wouldn't choose that. I would probably choose teacher name, Enix. Okay? But if I was storing my science teacher, my chemistry teacher, physics teacher, whatever, then of course, you know, maybe an extra n name here. Okay. All right. Now let's go back to this. They can be any sequence of letters, numbers, and underscores, except you can't start with a number. And they also cannot be a reserved word. You don't know any reserved words right now. Those are special words that tell Python to do something special. We'll worry about that later. Okay. Just remember, can't be reserved word. Okay. We'll talk about the reserved words later. Okay, there's not a lot. For example, if. If is a reserved word. So you don't want to say if equals Enix. <laughs> okay? And you don't want to start with a number. Okay? Um, like to teacher, no. Now, teacher two is okay, but to teacher, no. Now, descriptive names within reason. For example, pet name my grandma gave me when I was 15 equals sunny. Okay? No. <laughs> okay. You need to do it within reason. Okay. So what would be a good um, shortcut here? A variable name? Well, it depends. Are you going to hold more than one? For example, did my grandma have another one when I was 16 or 18 or whatever? Okay. So, I uh, and also, um, do I have pet name from my mom? So if I have pet names from different persons, I'm going to need grandma in there somewhere. Okay. Um, so I might say grandma pet name 15. Whoops. I need to set it something. Sunny. Okay, now if I don't have my mom's pet name, then I'm going to get rid of grandma. Okay, so now 
underscore is one way to do it. Another way to do it is this. Instead of that one, we can do this. Pet name 15 equals Sunny. Okay? So the main two ways that people combine multiple words for a variable name is using underscores or capitalizing every unique uh, name part of it. Okay? You know, for example, you, you wouldn't do this pet name 15 okay because it's two words we going to you're going to capitalize now i'm not going to worry too much about teaching standards you know many people throw a fit when i don't follow the standards for the naming conventions you know they said oh marcus you should have underscores here you shouldn't do it this way or the opposite way or whatever okay to me all that matters is that you do it one way and one way only in a certain program. For example, if I start doing favorite teacher's name with underscores, then I don't want to start doing this later on in the program. I want to keep doing underscores. If I start off with this, combining two words or three words with capital letters, then I want to keep doing that, okay? In other words, don't mix and match, okay? Always keep it the same. Now, this is very important because the computer doesn't care. Let me show you an example. A equals Enix. Teacher equals Enix. Favorite teacher equals Enix. Equals Enix. You're liking, well, what's that fourth one there? <laughs> My sentiments exactly. All right, let me talk about each of these. Okay. The first one there, you're not going to keep a job very long. Why is that? First off, your fellow programmers are going to hate you. Why? Because your fellow, fellow programmers are going to be your code reviewers. What happens when you work for a company and you are a programmer. Well, you're probably not the only programmer. But even still, even if you are the only programmer, you're going to have somebody in QA, quality assurance. Now, maybe they'll just run the program to see to get the results. Maybe they'll look at the code. I don't know. It depends what kind of QA team you have. But let's assume you're not the only programmer. So your fellow programmer or fellow programmers are going to be looking at your code. And they're going to say, huh? It's A, okay? Remember, they're not going to take a whole lot of time looking at your specs and everything. And they're just going to make sure you know, your code looks good. You know, Maybe they might read your specs. It really depends upon how big of a project it is. But the first thing they're going to do is look at your code and see if anything glares out as you know anything big, big problems or anything. And they're going to see this A equals Enix and say, nah, not even going to look at your code. Code it correctly, okay? And that's what they're going to say. Code it correctly. This is not correct because it doesn't tell anybody anything. What's A? Okay. Was this the name of, you know, a bad guy? <laughs> we don't know anything, okay? All right, let's take a look at the next one. Teacher. Well, that's okay. And if I'm not having multiple teachers, that's acceptable. Okay. Third one. Favorite teacher. Okay. This gets more descriptive. Okay. This is excellent. You know, especially if you have multiple teachers. Okay. So line two, line three are both good. It depends upon the situation. If you got multiple teachers, then this is not good. Okay. If you have multiple teachers, then this will be good. All right. Now this last one. Oh boy. <laughs> There are programmers out there who create variable names like this thinking that they won't get fired because no one else can understand their code. <laughs> All right. They're like, oh, I don't want to look at this code. Uh, don't fire him. That's their mentality. Okay. 
It may work for some companies, but it doesn't work for the good companies, okay? As soon as, you know, for example, if I'm going to code review for you and I see you do this, first thing I'm going to do is I say, no, I am not testing your code, okay? I'll go to my boss and say, hey, he's one of those people who believes, you know, he's the only one who should ever work on his code. You know, we don't need a person like this. Okay. This is not good because even if you stayed until you retired, what happens after you retire? Okay. We don't know what this code does. What if something happens, you know, it breaks? No. You know, we just don't know what to do. And this is not acceptable. So this is much worse than, you know, using this or this when you should be using the other. You know, I don't care as long as you're consistent. But something like this is definitely not acceptable anytime. So don't ever think that, oh, you're going to keep your job if you use cryptic names where none of your other coders or replace possible replacement coders would want to look at your code. Okay, no, don't even start. <laughs> okay, so variable names. Use descriptive, but don't go crazy. No, 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 this is not good. Okay, and let's see. Um, don't start with a number. So, for example, don't go 15 was the age my pet grant my pet name the grandma gave me was Sonny you know whatever don't start with the number okay um, let's see here where did I put it oh here we go um, so variable store data use descriptive names within reason letters numbers underscores so don't try to do something like this um, money equals 400 okay it won't work okay so let's see here show that won't work and let's bring up my window I don't have one so let's start it open and command file and we taught this lesson three so Python lesson three dot py invalid syntax okay it doesn't like that dollar sign so remember, you can only have letters, numbers, and underscores, and it cannot start with a number, okay? Five money will also give you an error. So first off, let's comment out this one, save it, okay? Now notice I commented out the pa this one before I did this one. The reason why is because Python will stop as soon as it finds the first error. Okay. For example, if you had dollar sign after each one of these, it's going to stop after the first one. Okay. And then you fix the first one, run it again. Oh, error in the second one. Oh, error in the third one. Okay. So that is one bad thing about Python. Okay. Is that it's not going to show you error, 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 error. <laughs> okay. There are some programming languages that will show you a whole bunch of errors. Python is not one of them. It's going to show you the very first error it finds and stop. Okay. Okay. So basically that's the whole video. Making sure you know how to create variable names. Okay. And also understand what variables are used for. So they're used to hold numbers, strings. Okay. Later on, we'll learn other data types and uh, use variable names for those. But for right now, we're just going to deal with numbers and strings. So please uh, make sure that you can create good variable names. I've got a homework over there. You know, whether you want to do it or not, it's up to you. This is, you know, a very simple exercise. Hopefully, this is one example where you could say, oh, I know about variable names. I don't need to do the homework. <laughs> okay, I'll let you pass on that one. Okay. <laughs> All right. So thank you very much and see you in the next class. Thank you. Bye-bye.